Hello and welcome to Module 3, Network Security. In this module, we are going to cover everything that you need to know about network security. Uh, previously, I think in the last course, we talked about LAN security. I think it was in Module 10. And with this module, you probably these two um, chapters covers in details, especially uh, uh, everything that you really need to know. This is like a full course on computer security fundamentals. Um, so we, I expect this chapter to be very long, but there's a lot of depth and information and good information that you should know. So uh, please pay attention. It might take a few videos to finish this up, but there's a lot of good information in here that you really need to know. Um, not a lot of hands-on stuff, but a lot of good information that you need to do. We will do some hands-on um, security labs, but um, again, please pay attention. Read. There's a lot of good videos also as well in the um, in the in the book in the online book and then netacad.com. So please review those as well. All right. So without further ado, don't forget to take the notes I'm going to ask you to take. All right. So you will take a few notes uh, between the next couple of videos and uh, submit them whenever we're done with each video. All right. So. We are going to cover all of these topics, so be ready. All right, so um, ethical hacking statement. So when it comes to ethical hacking, what does that mean? Ethical hacking means that you are trying to do some penetration testing to find out where the vulnerability is uh, for a network, an enterprise network. Give the company a list of uh, uh, a vulnerability assessment and what you're going to do about it, how you are going to mitigate against all of these threats and vulnerabilities and um, and build a defense for it, right? You're doing ethical hacking. The, the reason that you are trying to, to test, for example, if they have weak passwords or if they have any open port numbers or anything like that is that you can build um, a defense for it. All right, so uh, here's the first thing that you're going to do. Please take a snippet of this. You need to find out snippet or because um, writing it will be probably a little bit too much. So take a snippet and just pay attention to what I'm telling you. All right, so the first thing you are going to do is you're going to take an inventory of the assets. An asset is anything of value that the organization has. The company pays for... Uh, Chairs, computers, you name it, everything is an asset because otherwise they won't purchase it. So you need to take an inventory of everything, not only the uh, service switches, routers, and workstations, but I'm talking about everything. And then you're going to need to find out the vulnerability assessment. For data, there's a lot of software that you can install on your server and execute. There's open source vulnerability assessment that they go out and find out. Um, you know, if you have weak passwords, if you have some open ports, if you have some um, some patches that the operating system did not have, it will bring all of that out for you. Um, Nessus is one of them, but that you have to pay. There's Open VAS, V A S. That's an open source uh, that you can download and run, and it will tell you all the different vulnerabilities that you have on your system. Then you need to find out what the threat is, the potential danger to the company asset. You know, may, you may have a vulnerability, but there's no threat. But it's still, it's still a vulnerability and the threat may come out later on. Now, if somebody sees the threat and they want to exploit it, you know, and exploit is a mechanism that takes advantage of the vulnerability. So if there is an opening in ports or something that you can um, take, take advantage of to break into the system, of course, that's what, you know, ha hackers, what they do is they use a vulnerability assessment. They find out what's um, what's vulnerable, and um, they'll exploit that vulnerability, which means they'll use an open port, for example, which is a vulnerability, and to go into your system. But a threat is, you know, this is a threat, a potential danger that could happen. Somebody can steal the data from that open port. They can send in some, um, I don't know, uh, files that can sit on your system like a key logger and it would sit there and that's a threat that can this you know and see all the data on your system now once you uh find out what the vulnerability and if it's you know 
if there's a threat and somebody can exploit it, you have to mitigate it. So what you need to do once you find out the vulnerability is you have to take care of it. You know, what do you do to, um, to get rid of it? What's the likelihood that something is going to happen? That's the risk. You know, is there a risk on this? You know, sometimes, you know, uh, you may not want, you know, if let's say um, chairs or even the garbage can in your office, you know, and you leave your door uh, your door open, you know, what is the likelihood that somebody's good is going to steal your garbage can? So what? So you may accept the risk, right? But if it's your computer or your laptop that's in your office, you know, um, it's either you can accept the risk, but then you, you know, the chances, the likelihood that somebody might happen. And if it happens, you can have a lot of, you know, a loss. So what you do, it's either uh, you're protected when you're there, take your laptop home or lock it down or uh, have a desktop, close the door, of course. Um, or you may, in addition to that, you may get by insurance, right? Transfer the risk to someone else. All right, so... These are the security terms. You got to do this when you first got into as a security officer. Again, take take assets, uh, do vulnerability assessment, mitigate against any issues that you may find, and um, take care of the risk. All right, so vectors of network attacks. Um, you can have people from the outside, external threat and internal threats. Well, I'll tell you right now, external threats is much easier to handle. Because you'll have firewall, IPS is a whole bunch of different um, appliances that can protect you from the outside attacks. But internal attacks could be an issue because, you know, internal uh, employees have access to resources and they are being given privileges to access certain devices sometimes. And um, you, if you have thousands of employees, one disgruntled employee can sabotage your network. So you got to make sure... You know how to deal with them in a security policy. Um, don't trust anyone and give everyone just what they need, right? Uh, only um, what they need in terms of accessing resources, of course. All right, uh, <clears throat> data loss. So data loss can be, you know, you have stolen, stolen data linked through email or social engineering, unencrypted, so please write that down. Um, unencrypted devices, these bullet points, cloud storage devices, removable media, hard copy, or improper access as well. All of that could be, uh, you could lose your data in any of that, in any way. All right, so uh, there's various data loss preventions that control must be implemented. So make sure back up your data. That's extremely important. Okay. Um, now, take a snippet of this. This is the different, well, I, I told you actually to write them down, but you can take snippets snippet. This way you'll know a description of each one of them, right? All right, let's take a look at the threat um, actors. You got the white hat. You know what? You don't have to take a snippet. Just write it down. The white hat, the black hat, the gray hat. Uh, script kitties, vulnerability brokers, hackivists, cyber criminals, and state sponsored, of course. Right? So, um, you know what? Take, again, I think these are important to know because if you ever take a security fundamental course, these are going to come up and you're probably going to know these already by hand. So, again, take a snapshot of these, put them in your notes, right? Uh, just quickly, just to cover some of these, the white hacker is the one that works. This is the ethical hacker trying to find out the loopholes and uh, to let you know that you this is where you, where you need to uh, bring in hard in your devices, for example. Make sure that you have a strong password policies. Uh, black, hack, uh, black hat hackers are the bad guys, the unethical criminals, right? They're trying to break into your network either for for profit or just to um, or uh, break it for malicious purposes, right? Uh, gray hackers are individuals who commit crimes um, and do arguably unethical things, but they're not doing it for money or anything like that. Um, you know, they're just doing it for what I, I don't know. 
depending, they may disclose a vulnerability on the system to embarrass you, for example, um, but they're not really doing anything bad that, you know, they could be held responsible for. Uh, then you got the script kiddies. These are teenagers or anybody that's inexperienced. And nowadays, everybody is a hacker because you can download exploit kits off the dark net and execute them freely, right? And people love to do that. Vulnerability brokers, you know, those are usually the great hack hackers. They attempt to discover exploits and report them to the vendors, sometimes for money, right? So they're trying to find out where there's vulnerability and I tell you, hey, I got something. You have a loophole and you pay me or I'll, you know, I'll let you know what your problem is. Or I'll let you know where the, you know, um, where your vulnerability is. Things like that. Then you got the hack of it. You know, they're just there to embarrass governments or, uh, or people. Uh, cyber criminals and, of course, state sponsors. All right. So they go over each one of them. Let's look at some of the tools that these hackers use. All right. Again, take a snapshot of this. You got the password crackers. Um, in our ethical hacking course, we'll be doing some of these. We'll use John the Ripper, uh, TC Hydra to crack, Rainbow Crack, Medusa. We'll be using these tools to crack passwords. I'll tell you right now. Is something to remember when it comes to password. Never ever save your password on anything on your on your website. If that if you get a little window that says should I save your password? No, no. Windows, by the way, saves the password automatically on your computer. Uh, it's hashed. Um, we I will show you in our ethical hacking course, and maybe we'll do that as an exercise that you can get that hash and you can take it offline and you can crack it. If it's um, a dictionary word hack uh, password, not long enough, I'll be able to crack and find out what it is. Um, I'll show you where to go, be able to do that. So therefore, never ever save your password anywhere, no matter what. And number two, make sure that your password is a phrase, long, capital letters, lowercase letters, and some numbers, okay? And um, make it a sentence that no one else knows. Okay, that's all. And periodically change it, especially if you think somebody is trying to break into your network or your computer is being used by someone else. All right, like in school or somewhere else or at work, um, your password has to be changed periodically, maybe every three months or so. Because I can take your password and just run it for days and days and days. And uh, ultimately, I'll crack it because there's rainbows of passwords out there. There are, you know, some of them are 15 gigabytes of just passwords. You'll be amazed. And it's just a matter of time. But if you keep changing it, somebody took it and guessed it after three months. Well, too bad because I've changed it after three months, the password, right? So periodically changing your password, especially on a computer that's being used at work where someone else shares your computer. Then you got the wireless hacking tools uh, to break into your network. We'll use Aircrank in our ethical hacking course or Kismet to break into even the WPA. All right. So you can have free, especially if that password is, again, weak. And now what I mean by weak, less than 10 characters with capital letters and lowercase letters. And do not use um, <clears throat> a, a dictionary word. Right. Then you got the network scanning hacking tools. Um, you got the TCP, UDP, NTP scan. You got the packet crafting tools. Uh, your Cena is famous for breaking into Cisco's. Um, so HP also will be able to use that. Nemesis. Then you got the packet sniffer. Wireshark is the famous. We have that. You can download. It's a free download editor cap. It can capture data for uh, man in the middle, um, SSL strip. Not, you know, if you have, if you connect it to HTTPS, uh, prior to 2012, you were able to strip the S and have people sending data without using the H using HTTP, which means the data that's being transferred is unencrypted and you'll be able to capture that. All right, I'm going to stop right here. We'll discuss more on the next video. So save that.
and upload it. And I'll see you on the next video.